Ford. Uh, there, he's a TV critic, but knows his uh, industry uh, as well. Talking about great telly, folks. My final guest uh, today. How many of you sat glued to Tour de France? I cu- I couldn't believe it. ITV Four do a running thing, which is like a marathon. And that guy, Gary Imlock, the anchor, I think as a sports specialist is probably the one of the best, if not the best in the country. Knowledgeable, informed. And I just, off air, I found out that in the thick of the Tour de France this year was a man you've already heard from uh, this lunchtime, Professor Kevin Curran, Professor of Cybersecurity at the University of Ulster. And uh, Kevin, I thought, oh, look at you there, you look at me being, getting my selfie done beside your man Sagan. Sagan Peter Sagan. The, Peter Sagan, the, yeah. the renowned writer. But yeah. there was a reason in your... And your travels, wasn't there? Yeah. So four years ago, after 112 years, believe it or not, um, the Tour de France finally got the technology which allows them to track riders in real time. Um, you might think that it's been around for ages, but it hasn't because it's not that easy to track a rider. Um, of course, they've got these GPS tags underneath the saddles now, which was put in by Dimension Data, a £7 billion organisation with 30,000 employees. They specialise in this type of work. They're a computer company. Um, they specialise in networking and security, and therefore they brought me to Tour de France to see how it works. And I was there with other journalists and a team from the BBC Click programme, mm. my favourite technology show, were there as well. So but we Kevin, got to you see. Know, if I click on Google Maps on my iPhone, yes, uh, and I'm in the car or a passenger in a car, more particularly, it's real time and it, it shows yeah. you going up your street, round the corner, real time. So how come this yeah. took so long to be uh, adjustable for the like of the tour? It is be- because really it goes through rural France, it goes up into the Alps, it goes ten thousand meters up. You also have tens of thousands of spectators as well, so you cannot rely on the mobile networks. So what they did was create generally what you have is a, an av- you have 80 motorbikes plus about another 50 cars as well, all part of the, the tour train, the official ASO organization. They form a mesh network. The nearest motorbike or car communicates with each bike, gets the data off there, and then sends it to the helicopters above. I, is that how it works? There's two helicopters which monitor the race from start to finish, and they also, in very bad days, will also have a plane hovering overhead. And, and they can, are low. Goodness me. And they, yes. you know, there's people in the fields, there are people at the churches, there are people... Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a magnificent national statement. It, it is indeed, yeah. I mean, it started in 1903. It's the third big, it's the biggest bike race in the world. It's the third biggest event um, in history, you know, every year or every four years actually with the Olympics beat it and the World Cup but generally year on year the, the Tour de France gets the biggest sporting audience. Oh. 1903 is when it started they had to wait for two days people went to cinemas to see highlight reels 1929 they had the first radio broadcast 1948 is the first TV and then from 1958 onwards, they've had the helicopters tracking it as well. So is this information that you're observing transferable to ordinary lives or is it specialist stuff? Um, it, it is. I mean, they've done, and of course, they come along and they could do other, they, they apply it as well because Dimension Data come along and so do ASO. The people who organise the Tour de France also use it in other sporting events and stadiums to give um, um, people who come to these stadiums more of um, an insight again, just like Formula One has done, where yeah. Formula One has applied technology and that's where the Tour de France said that they had to engage viewers more because they found their audience was aging and they found that if they could really see riders in real time and where they are, yeah. then they could tell, you know, will they catch the gap? Will they catch the breakaway? Yeah, because last year when I was watching it was like he's 11 and a half kilometres ahead yeah. and then about two minutes later he's 11.1. But yeah. this time round it's like... 572 metres to the finishing line, yeah. 482 metres to the finish. It was almost as quick as they could change the graphic that the yeah. bike had moved on 79 metres exactly. Yeah, it, it, it is, is in real time because previously to this they would have had multiple relying on the people on the motorbikes leaning out, counting the riders, getting their number, relaying that back to headquarters and also people in the car. And if you were a rider maybe within a large peloton of 30 or in a breakaway, you might your, your stats might go missing for 10, 15, 20 mm-hmm. minutes, whatever, and your team may not know where so you actually uh, are. You're saying about Formula One, it has the tracker, I mean, the Clippers had the tracker uh, for years and years. Implications here, what, long distance running, Kevin? I'm just trying to think of other implications. Golf mm-hmm. or stuff that people physically move about? Football, uh, well, I can't know, but they, they generally have been solved. I mean, yes, Dimension Data have gone on to use it against um, to use it being able to track against wildlife poaching for other things Uh but really what it is it's it's more a specific solution for the Tour de France because if the Tour de France did not change the towns it visits every year 
then you could put cell infrastructure along the route and they could have had microwave transmissions. But because they actually do change the routes, it's a all apart, fish. Yeah, apart from the, 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 the ending in, the, in Champs Elysees, yeah. again, they do change it all the time. So you cannot invest the, the infrastructure. So what they do is to provide the solution, which again is only used for and can also be transferred then to um, the Giro d'Italia or any other races as well. So it actually is a. Is, is, you know, it's an actual technological solution for a specific mm. um, race which occurs every year. Obviously. Like ITV4, I have to give them huge credit, commercial competitors of ours. But I got they, to meet the guys actually as well. Honestly. Welcome back to the broadcasting van. I watch it every night. Chris Boardman and Gary Board, Imlock. Yeah, uh, they were in the broadcasting van. Imlock, is, I think he's a genius. He yeah. really is. Uh, all right, Kevin, thank you for that. Professor Kevin Curran's thoughts on the tour there. I thought Grant Thomas was magnificent, but I think every headline writer in the country has beat me to that one. Uh, just finally, Paul, off the, off the phone, says a parrot or a parakeet. Somebody might have lost it. It's living outside my house in the wild. A green bird. Uh, so it's not Jerry McKeever's. Looks like an Australian parakeet. It's been there at least...